what's up guys gamefire 10 back with you tonight um sorry about the appearance i look a little sweaty i'm just sitting in my car on my break um i've been just trying to re record this a couple different times and hopefully i uh, get a take that i'm looking for i think we're getting there um but yeah um i was just inspired a little bit actually to make this video i've been wanting to jump back in for a little while and especially um, into the horror community where we've got a new Halloween movie coming in October. I'm just super pumped about that. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I just, uh, I really love and appreciate horror in general. Um, you know, more than, uh, just an average movie goer. I definitely consider myself a horror fan. And, um, yeah, I just wanted to actually toss in a couple cents, um, on Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. Uh, I'm not considering this an official review or anything like that. Um, I just want to offer, you know, some quick thoughts and uh, uh, d defend it a little bit because I think it does get a lot of hate in the uh, Halloween fan community. I know it has its uh, supporters, and I'm definitely one of them. I don't um, like it for everything that it did. I don't, you know, support every aspect of the movie. We have the vaping. I'm just taking out my break after all. I'm just going off the cuff, really. Um, but, well, in, in terms of the vaping, anyway. And, and my thoughts about the movie, to be fair. I don't have uh, the movie in front of me right now, uh, no matter how many times I've seen it. Uh, it's, it's always good to get a fresh set of eyes, at least before um, doing a review, anyway. But that's why these are just some quick thoughts. Um, what I don't like about the movie, I don't like um, that they changed Dr. Loomis and Laurie Strode. Uh, they made Dr. Loomis into just a greedy asshole who was just, you know, trying to make a profit off of the whole tragedy. Michael Myers and all the murders that happened in the first film. Um, and Laurie Strode, I mean, I, you know, I don't mind playing the angle, uh, you know, where somebody's been through a lot of shit and they're really showing, um, you know, the traumatic uh, effects of that. Um, I just felt that she went a little bit to Rob Zombie-esque over the top. And and I defend him a lot when he goes over the top. Sometimes I really think that fits his style, but sometimes, just like anyone else, I think he needs to kind of rein in uh, what he's doing a little bit and with his characters. And obviously, you know, it's not just how he or whomever wrote the character. Um, you know, Scott Taylor Compton, she she's done a great job, uh, especially in the first film. I thought she did at least a solid job portraying um, Laurie Strode, and in the second one, you know, there were moments, but, uh, I just, uh, I wasn't as big a fan of what they did with that character. I think it's interesting to explore that, you know, trauma route a little bit. I know they did that in H2O some, you know, Laurie kind of had a little bit of an alcohol problem. Um, but I, would almost like to see it explored like that. I get it's a lot fresher in this film, the experience to her. Um, but, you know, just kind of, you know, keeping those aspects there and part of the character and in the film, but it doesn't have to be all of who she is. She doesn't just need to be, you know, a dick to everybody the whole movie. I, I get that, you know, people go through various different things and traumatic experiences, and that's, you know, a, a totally natural reaction. Um, but, in the, you know, again, we're making a slasher movie, so it's all about, you know, turning certain dials, and I would have just dialed back some of the more, I guess, extreme Rob Zombie aspects of both, um, both those characters. And, of course, Loomis, like I said, greedy asshole in this film. I'll go into a lot more depth on him and his plot and Laurie's plot uh, when I do an official review on this movie. Um, what I do like about it, though, is that uh, Rob Zombie had the balls to do his own thing. You know, he really wanted to go his own direction with this one. And he had the... Um, he had the ability to do so as well, because he wasn't retelling anything this time. He wasn't, um, uh, you know, telling us about events that, you know, we didn't already know about in in the first film. You know, obviously he fleshed out uh, Michael's childhood a lot and gave him a white trash upbringing again. You know, whatever opinion on that you may have, it's not so much my thing. Um, but what I really do like about Rob Zombie's Halloween, too, is he was just kind of able to go into his own vision and not have to, you know, I guess try and fill in the blank on something or, uh, you know, just kind of rehash the original movie, which is kind of what uh, the second half of Rob Zombie's original Halloween was. Um, yeah, I like that he was able to go his own route in this film, and I like that he gave us, um, and that Tyler Maine and his performance delivered just an 
absolutely vicious and visceral Myers. Everybody that uh, ever has a, you know, uh, everybody always talks about um, the opening scene in the hospital, and even people that don't like this movie will tend to say, yeah, I at least like those 10, 15 minutes of the movie. Um, it's just great. There's, you know, it's raining all over the place. Like, I'm pretty sure there's some thunder, too. Just, like, some really nice atmospheric um, effects. And Michael Myers, especially when he kills the nurse in the beginning of this movie, and for those of you that have seen it, you know what I'm talking about. It's just absolutely visceral. It's totally brutal um, when Michael goes to kill in this movie. He absolutely stabs the shit out of her. Um, and most other people that he uh, comes across, too varying degrees. Um, a lot of people didn't like how uh, Rob Zombie made Michael Myers sort of this this giant and a hobo. Um, and to be honest, I mean, uh, you know, not that I would necessarily want that um, for every portrayal of Michael Myers. Not the giant part, although I do always, I do think Michael Myers should always be a little bit on the tall side, because even in the original, I think Nick Castle was about uh, six, six feet, six two, somewhere in there. Um, so Michael Myers has always been rather tall, but of course, as we all know, he's just gargantuan. He's massive in Rob Zombie's uh, iteration of Halloween. Um, but I like that he kind of, you know, gave him that drifter vibe, you know, with uh, just a really tattered up jacket and the, uh, you know, just the long ass hair and the fucking massive beard. Like, the, that's exactly what Michael Myers would be, and that's why I like that angle so much. Um, People that complain about it, I just don't get it. Like, you know, what what else would you expect uh, Michael to be, I suppose? I don't think he'd really care about hygiene or he'd be stopping to shave or getting a haircut or anything like that. So that's exactly how I'd expect Michael Myers uh, to look. And I guess you could say that's my sort of preferred look for it. Um, I guess in the original, I, uh, when he's un unmasked in the 1978 original, uh, you know, we don't see any of those sorts of features on him. He's got short hair, no beard or anything like that. Um, and that's fine. That's maybe understandable or whatever, seeing as he just uh, got out of the asylum. I, I don't know. I don't need to uh, dig too deep into the theories on whether uh, what their policies for giving uh, inmates at Smith's Grove haircuts are. But I guess it's more more plausible because he just, you know, he came out of an environment where he was somewhat being taken care of, I guess, in that movie. Whereas in this movie, Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, he's been out of that environment, uh, Smith's Grove, for quite some time. I think, um, is it, I want to say two years? It's a, it's a year or two in the director's cut, and I believe it's a little bit different in the theatrical, which I can't say I've ever seen, and I guess that um, this brings me to kind of a th final thought for this movie. Again, it's not a review, so I'm going to go, I plan to go way more in depth with all this stuff um, over time. I just wanted to offer up some quick thoughts. Um, also, in the uh, unrated cut, it features Michael Myers talking at the end. Um, he says, when he says die to Dr. Loomis, um, and I know so many people are, absolutely hate that moment. I've been so on the fence about it. Honestly, you, you could have it in there and you could not have it in there. And I, I guess I could go either way really personally. Um, but at the end of the day, I, I, I do think it's kind of cool and it fits with, uh, what Rob Zombie was doing, um, with Michael Myers and his vision. Um, but yeah, ultimately that, that's what I really like about this film. Ultimately it, um, Rob Zombie really brought his own, uh, vision to it. And I don't like everything the, that he did, you know, with that. I don't, uh, like every angle that he put on the story. You know, I think there's some bullshit in the movie and that there's some, there's parts that I would have personally changed completely. Um, but there's some really good shit in this movie, I think. And it's one of my favorite, uh, Halloween films just for how visceral and brutal it is and they were willing to give us a little bit of a different take on Michael Myers. Um, also like, I guess this final thought, um, I do like in this film how he uh, he travels around without his mask because it makes sense in this film uh, with a mask all tattered up and stuff like that, it would stick out like a sore thumb and otherwise he can just kind of, you know, appear like uh, just a drifter, just kind of blend in a little bit. Um, and he only puts on his mask, uh, when he's killing in this film. I think that's cool. It kind of adds a little bit of, uh, symbol yeah, symbolism and meaning to the mask for him. Um, he's only using it when he, um, expresses his violent side. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think overall, um, you know, I'm 
not like the biggest fanboy in the world of uh, either of Rob Zombie's films. In fact, I'm not even, I don't even really like uh, his first one all that much. Uh, but I like the sequel because he dared to do something different with it. He was really able to, you know, bring his own vision to the table. Again, I don't like every aspect of that. Um, but this is one of those movies, I think a lot of other people, that if you kind of looked in between the lines a little bit and you looked at kind of, you know, some of the good parts, some of the cool stuff, uh, there's some really neat stuff in there. And, yeah, I was inspired a little bit to talk uh, talk about this movie from Killer Flicks. Uh, um, well, I was just inspired a little bit by the group because I wanted to uh, add two more cents, uh, another opinion to this one, I suppose. I wanted to uh, definitely show that there's as much love for Rob Zombie's Halloween 2 out there as there is hate. Um, so, all right, guys, thank you. It's been Gamefire 10. Peace.